check the weather first to see how fast I need to get ready. And today, looks like we're not in the biggest rush, so I'll make some breakfast. I'm one of those <clears throat> terrible people that put the eggshells back in the egg carton. I, I never used to be a morning person, but since I started like sledding, I think I became a morning person and now I need to be up at least an hour before, but in the spring I'd rather be up like an hour and a half, even two hours early. So that becomes the dilemma when we have to leave the house at 5.30. Caught me on a new pepper day. This thing has settings. Minimum, max, and turbo. <laughs> this is my sad light. It's really dark here and there isn't a lot of sunlight. And um, it's hard not to get kind of like bummed out and unmotivated. So this is something, as we all know, I have um, had a lot of issues with mental health over the years. And this is something my psychiatrist recommended, as well as vitamin D drops. Um, but yeah, I just sit in front of this for like a half an hour every morning usually and then I just can do some emails and eat my breakfast. I try to stretch every morning. I, it's not even try, it's more just out of necessity I wake up feeling so stiff. It's, the streets are more like injuries impact, bruising and feeling sore because you like landed on your ass on concrete from 20 feet up. But like muscle soreness wise, sledding is way gnarlier. So I always have two of everything when I go out. One pair of goggles I'll just put right onto my sled helmet and they just kind of live there. Supplies, I'll show you. Hand warmers, I have my like fire making kit. It's inside two Ziplocs and the inner one is like a freezer Ziploc. Um, I have extra batteries for my transceiver in case I have to spend the night and my batteries are running out. Helmet, obviously, um, had a lot of head injuries over the years. Put everything in a bin now, it's just easier. Board booth findings, hat gloves, got a little shovel transceiver for spin. The most physical part of the day, like snowboarding is like 10% of it, 5% of it, sometimes like 3% of it. Because sometimes you don't even get to the spot to be able to snowboard. Sometimes you're just like stuck all day trying to get there and then you get there and the clouds roll in so you can't film anyways. As far as safety goes, like non-negotiable is always have a beacon and run your beacon check in the morning. Do beacon drills. We also have shovels and probes in our backpacks and we kind of made a rule like just keep your backpack on so that you always have a shovel close. It is a lot of work and it is a lot of preparation and it is a lot of gear and it is a lot of money and sometimes when you're out there you it's just it seems like so much but it all adds up to be something really special at the end of the season like when you watch all your footage or when I sit down in the editing room and see that there's like a fat stack of clips and folders in there. It's not easy, but it's so rewarding when it works out.